has a lot of divergences, but at the same time, on everyone's mind and every nation's uh, uh, vision, there is thinking of that common future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you believe there's a common understanding. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me jump to Amali on this one now. Thanks. Thank what you. What do you see? Thank you very much. Um, I think the, the, the biggest common point, I think, for all of us is that we have a planet to live on yeah. in 100 years' time and that all of us who are living here can do so with access to healthcare and to education, um, that we can be thriving in our countries, that we can be looking after our natural resources and managing that effectively, whilst driving the growth and prosperity of our countries as well. Um, this is not an easy challenge, um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enthusiastic about it. You know, I think we see some incredible work being done and I'm, I must admit, I'm blown away. My first visit to Rwanda, you have an amazing country, President. Um, and I think, you know, the, for me, coming here and having us all together to be able to share our knowledge, share our resources, to help each other to solve these big challenges, that's the common future uh, as I see it. Um, and certainly I'm feeling very bullish um, that I think we are heading in better directions with that. Thank you for that. Makta Diop, from your view, what do you see? I'm seeing a world which is uh, full of uncertainty, but I think that uncertainty can be transformed in certainty. And uh, to do that, we need to structurally transform what is happening on the continent. Uh, all these uncertainties coming from crises which is multiform, food, health, slowdown, disturbance in the value uh, supply chain. But what we have seen here in Rwanda in response to the COVID-19 crisis is a good example of what I'm telling in terms of structural transformation, which requires for me three things, ambition, vision, and implementation capacity. When the crisis started and the world was talking about vaccine crisis and inequity, this country sees that opportunity, sees that moment to say, let's do things differently and structurally. And this is a good illustration of what I think that needs to be done and the vision I have for the continent. A, a, a vision where the continent will take this uncertainty, transform it in uncertainty, and to do that, we have all the instrument, and one of them is Africa Trade uh, 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 Agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Adesina, your view. Well, thank you. Uh, first, let me Thank His Excellency President Paul Kagame for inviting us here. So I have an opportunity to thank you and also to thank my dear sister, uh, Secretary General Patricia Scotland for this fantastic meeting. I think when one talks about common future, President Kagame said it already. And I think also um, what, uh, what just said by Mokta, when you enter Kigali, it's different every single time you enter it. The last time I came to see the president was three years ago. And I couldn't even recognize Kigali when I got here. So when we talk about a common future, a common future needs good leadership mm -hmm. to shape that future. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have here. And I also think that kind of common future is what Patricia Scotland just very well explained to us here just this morning. The second thing I want to say is, just listening to the Secretary General, just as what she was talking, you were saying that the size of the economy of the Commonwealth will grow, it's about 13 trillion dollars. Now, but the issue is, it's concentrated though. Five countries are the ones that actually control most of those. That's in, that is UK, that is um, Australia, Canada, maybe Nigeria and India. So that common future must be exactly what President Kagame said, common wealth. It must be well shared all across. The second one is also that the common future must be the future of the youth. And when I was just watching up there, and you said 60% of the population of the Commonwealth is less than the age of 29. So the future is here. So we got to make sure that we build the Commonwealth for the youth it's 73 years old, but it's actually a very young Commonwealth. And the last point I wanted to make on the common future is what Malis said. 
We cannot have a common future without a common planet. So we have to have climate resilience. We have to make sure that, as also President Kagame and also Mokta were saying, that we also have vaccines. Today we are here, we are doing well because we have vaccines, but it's an inequitable access to vaccines. Only 16% of Africa has access to vaccines. So we cannot have that common future in which we all live unless we have equitable access to vaccines. Excellent. Thank you so much. And, and there's a lot of ongoing work on the continent in that regard as well right now. Um, Dr. Forrest, let me come to you. What do you see? What's the common future for you? Well, I'm, I have to admit to being really excited about the vision that I see for the Commonwealth. Um, and it's kind of encapsulated, I think, in my relationship with President Kagame. We had dinner together in my home not long after you became president at, at your first Chogham, I think. And just to see the growth across the Commonwealth, but in particular in relation to human values, human rights, where we have to start is equal education outcomes, not targets, equal education outcomes for girls and boys. And of course, that removes any possibility of having forced marriage or childhood marriage or any form of modern slavery. We're not going to get there with those things which are dragging the economies down. But how to build the economies up? Well, I think the greatest way to build the economies up is just to come swinging back to vaccinations. We have to remove the fear of disease. That is for certain. We need to really prolifically invest vaccinations into Africa. But even more prolifically and even more certain and more permanently, we've got to invest in our children. We have to invest in girls and boys, equal education outcomes. And how then do we create this level playing field between developing nations, between African nations, Commonwealth nations and the rest of the world. Well, it isn't through just continuously backing dirty fuels, continuously backing hyper expensive. The more you use it, the more expensive they become fossil fuels. We have new technology breaking across the world. We have a huge new possibility for every member of the Commonwealth, particularly here in Africa, of very inexpensive. The more you use it, the cheaper it becomes. The more you use it, the more abundant it becomes. And that's renewable energy. Green electrons from electricity, green molecules like fossil fuel, but this time they don't destroy the environment. You can transport them everywhere. A transportable energy future like coal, oil or gas, but it's fully green, no harm, and the more you use it, the cheaper it becomes. Here in Africa, the Renewable Energy Agency of the world says you have a thousand times more renewable energy than you're ever going to need by 2040. Let's capture that for the kids. Let's capture that for the economy, and let's capture that for a Thank you. Wow. That's an incredible statistic. Uh, let me come back to you now, President Kagame. And when you look at the role of the Commonwealth on delivering on this common future, and I think we've mentioned the importance of leadership, the importance of so at, you know national level, country level. You know, talk us through the role of the Commonwealth and what we need to do better, what we need to lean into. Yeah, with the Commonwealth, um, we already have many things in common, indeed be it the language, be it uh, the different systems, uh, financial systems that would enable us to make investments, uh, trade with each other, uh, all together. So there is a starting point that is more or less, I would say, good enough. But we need to make it better. We need to keep making sure that the Commonwealth, when we talk about the Commonwealth, we actually mean the Commonwealth, not uh, just that being common to a few of the many 54 countries. So, and this is why I said it keeps being a work in progress. We keep having to 
engage one another, finding out what we can do uh, to bring that balance to the extent that uh, everyone in the Commonwealth, the family of nations, uh, feels they are part of it. Right. Uh, no one is left behind. I think this is what we have to, to, to focus on. Um, so that, um, you know, even those at the lower level, this, that was said earlier, the small developing uh, nations feel they're not left behind. We uplift everyone. And, and move towards that and fulfill that obligation to the commonness that we uh, aspire to in this family of nations. So whether it is trade, it's, uh, trade and business, investments, different things. When other issues were talked about, health, you know, we had this pandemic, we had uh, a shortage of uh, vaccines. At times, vaccines were there for uh, fewer countries than, uh, you know, the many that were left without for quite a long time. But at a certain point, of course, uh, we were able now to see that uh, flow to, to the people who were lacking uh, in that. But, but the pace at which things move uh, needs to be increased uh, and so that we give more value to the Commonwealth and the feelings uh, of the people of the Commonwealth. Okay, so the pace is really important then.